In today's video, we head to the largest and most populous outlying territory of the USA. Puerto Rico is located in the middle of the Caribbean, and despite its strong connection to the United States, Spanish is the main language spoken on the island. Of course, the global language of football is also spoken, and we'll take a closer look at it today. With more than 3 million inhabitants, Puerto Rico is one of the larger Caribbean islands. Although it has no direct voting rights in the presidential election in the USA, as a foreign territory it at least sends one representative to the House of Representatives of Congress. The capital and largest city of the country is San Juan, which lies directly on the northeastern coast. The most popular sports are baseball, basketball and boxing. But football on the island also has a long history that goes back into the 1940s. It is precisely this story that I want to tell in this video. First, let's start with club football on the island, which was divided for some time but is now uniformly Puerto Rican. Some teams started in American leagues and we will now take a look at these. The most prominent club is probably the Puerto Rico Islanders, who played in different leagues from 2004 to 2012. Although there was a predecessor franchise that quickly disbanded in 1994 and moved to Houston. They then started in the A-League, a joint league of the USA and Canada in 2004 and were coached by Diego Armando Maradona's brother, among others. In 2006, the team had meanwhile switched to the United Soccer League and they made the playoffs and also played against Miami FC with stars like Romario and Zinho. In 2011, the Islanders entered the NASL, the National Soccer League, which was the second highest league after MLS at the time. However, financial difficulties followed and the team ended in 2014. Puerto Rico FC took over the playing rights and competed in the NASL for the last time in 2017. There were other teams that played in American leagues. There was Puerto Rico United, Club Atletico River Plate Puerto Rico, and Sevilla FC Puerto Rico, but all are now inactive or have moved to the domestic league system. Our insider today is Cody Lorandi, who also played for the aforementioned Puerto Rico Islanders during his career. He also had stints with Fort Lauderdale, LA Galaxy, Austin Aztecs and Oklahoma City. He made his debut for the Puerto Rico national team in 2017 and played his last game in March 2021 against Trinidad. He has since ended his career but he can tell us a lot about the football enthusiasm on the island. I was there from 2010, 11 and 12, right? So, so at that point, soccer, soccer was, was popular, but it was not one of the bigger sports. You know, now fast forward 10 years. Now you see, you see um, soccer, not just on, in Puerto Rico, but just the general interest of the sport has just exploded. Um, so you get more people that move to Puerto Rico from, let's say Spain, right. And football, soccer is, is what they know. And I think you're seeing a direct, uh, correlation between interest, um, and the amount of people that play it now on the Island. The football leagues on the Island have been on a bit of a journey. In 2008, there was a unified league on Puerto Rico for the first time. And this has been steadily developed in the meantime. Liga Puerto Rico is the highest division, but still at amateur level. 13 clubs participate in the league, but because of COVID, the league had to be suspended recently. However, there is a big vision on the island. It is called the Puerto Rico Soccer League, and the big goal is to create professional conditions and install a professional league. It is also about raising players to a new level so that Puerto Rico can qualify for the World Cup in 2026. Especially after the severe Hurricane Maria in 2016, it was necessary to build a completely new infrastructure for football. Joes Saralta, chairman of the new league, says the following. The Puerto Rico Soccer League developed the roadmap to the 2026 World Cup, counting on two primary needs. First class infrastructure and a first class operated league. Liga Pro accomplished both of these goals. It remains exciting to see whether this great undertaking will succeed. If you're interested in this topic, 
please let me know in the comments below and I can make a separate video on the Plant Liga Pro in Puerto Rico. Also, feel free to share this video so it gets even more attention. Finally, we look at the international performance of the Puerto Rico clubs. The Islanders took advantage of Puerto Rico's right to compete in the newly formed Champions League in the 2008-2009 season. Impressive performances followed and they made it to the semi-finals, but then lost to Cruz Azul from Mexico on penalties. No other Puerto Rican team has achieved greater success since. And now the only way to the Champions League is through the Caribbean Club Championship. But no team has managed to win the title in recent years. Now let's talk about the national team, which has its sights set on the big goal of qualifying for the 2026 World Cup. It would be the biggest success in history, because so far these have been few and far between. The Federación Puerto Ricana de Fútbol was founded in 1940 and the national team's first match was against Cuba in the same year. In 1960, the team became a member of FIFA and the qualification for the 1974 World Cup in Germany was the first in which the team took part. To date, however, they have not qualified for any World Cup, so the longing is great here. The Gold Cup has also been an unattainable goal. They have been trying to qualify since 1991, but so far they have not succeeded. I spoke to Cody about what he thinks the chances are for Puerto Rico to be in a major tournament soon. I think a Gold Cup is in reach, um, my personal opinion. I think, uh, I, I think now, like I was saying, there's more continuity within the coaches because uh, through my personal experience, I rep, I, I played for the national team for the past five, five years. And I believe we had four coaches, right? So you can't develop into a great footballing nation with that much turnover. Um, they have Dave Sarakin, who's the head coach there now, which is a phenomenal hire because he's done it as a, an assistant with the national team. He's done it at the LA Galaxy, big time, big time name. Um, so he has them trending in the right direction. I, it's my hope that he's able to be there long term. It's my hope that they're able to look after him financially, give him everything that he possibly needs. Uh, to to recruit the talent and then obviously to develop that talent. In the newly formed CONCACAF Nations League, they scored two wins from four games in the last edition and managed to stay in the Division C. A look at the squad reveals that only a few current internationals play in the domestic league. The American League system clearly dominates here, with almost the entire squad playing there. With Sarek Valentine, they also have a professional who earns his money in the MLS. Captain Nicolas Cardona, who is only 22, is a promising central defender who also has high hopes for the big project of the 2026 World Cup. Cody sees a bright future for the national team. I'm hopeful that where football in the U.S., where soccer in the U.S. is going, this upwards trajectory will include Puerto Rico and its plans over the next 10 years. It remains very exciting to see how football develops on the Caribbean island and whether the big goal will be achieved. A professional league would be the first big step. I would really wish it for the players from Puerto Rico. This brings us to the end of our journey today and we leave Puerto Rico again. Many exciting impressions and pictures remain. I hope we will see the country on the big stage. Of course, I also hope that you enjoyed the video. If so, I would be very happy if you subscribe to my channel Football Worldwide. Give the video a like and share it with football enthusiasts from all over the world. Be curious where our journey will take us next. See you soon.